Okay. So the goal today is to kind of continue with implicit intents. Um, we talked a little bit about them in general on Monday, um, so we want to dive further into them today. So if I can get your attention up here on the screen, um, we're going to recap a little bit on tense, both explicit and in and implicit, and then we're going to go over um, kind of the overview of what an implicit intent is, and then we'll talk about how we send it as well as how do we receive it. So, to recap, um, an intent is a description of something we want to do, of an operation we want to perform, and we use it to tell the Android operating system to go load up the app component that can do that, right? So usually that means loading up a, an activity, um, but it can also mean other kinds of components as well. Um, we can use it to start an activity. We can use it to start up services. Again, we'll talk about those in Unit 3, and well as delivering broadcasts. Again, those two things we'll talk about in Unit 3. But right now we're focused on activities. Um, so an explicit intent, as we as we already have discussed, is you're saying I explicit I want you to load this class. I have to give you the actual class reference to say open up an instance of this activity. Right now, remember if I'm sending an implicit intent, the difference is that I'm just not telling it which class to open. I'm letting the operating system choose which application to use. Okay, so it may be, it, you may, the user might choose to use your own app if you've got something that can do that functionality, or they may choose to use another app, right? So let's say you want to open a web page, so they're probably going to use their default web browser, right? If the, you want to play a YouTube video, well, that's going to open up in YouTube. If you want to give them directions to your business, well, that's going to open up in their default map app. So where we're really talking about these implicit intents coming up is generally when you're asking for another app to do the work. Okay, does that make sense? It's really about having another app do that part of the work. So what do we do with uh, implicit intent? So common things we can do is say share an article um, a lot of apps have, have ways to share that document that you're looking at so hey you can send it to somebody else whether it be one of your friends or, or family members or whatnot um, we can also view it on a map we can take pictures that way taking pictures is a really really common use case um, because you want to let them just kind of use the their own camera app and whatever filters they have there and then bring it back um, so to do that, we have to always we always have to specify an action. So in place of specifying the class, we specify the action that we want it to perform. Um, and we optionally may also need to add things like the data, which is that URI for which document do they want do you want them to open, whether it be a telephone number or an address, or whether it be or it's a, a URL, any of those things. So. Again, we're not going to specify the target activity. We're going to let it figure that out. So that the Android operating system is going to take that implicit intent that we give it, and it's going to look at it and say, OK, given these attributes that you've, you've specified, let me go figure out which apps can actually do that for you. Right? So if you've asked me for, um, I want to take a picture, well, then I need to go look what camera apps you have installed. Right, and and some users might have more than one camera app installed, so it might actually have to go ask, come back and ask you, and say, well, which of these three do you want to use, or which of these two apps do you want to use? So how does it work? Um, so Android, the Android runtime, your phone or your tablet keeps track of all the apps that are installed on your device and keeps track of which of those apps have registered that they're interested in in certain implicit intents. Any app on your phone can register for these implicit intents. Okay. Um, and the way that you register is you declare it in your manifest file. 
right? So this is another reason why your manifest file is really, really important because the operating system uses it as a way to kind of enter into your app. So simply by you saying you can handle this kind of thing, now you become an option in the app chooser. Yes. That function is kind of always the same as like when you're on Windows and you right click, open with, and a bunch of apps would show up. Yeah, it, it's similar. Um, it's similar. The way that uh, Windows deal with, with it is actually a lot less flexible than what Android does, actually. Um, what Windows does is really honestly very basic, and it's simply based on the um, file extension. It's given this file extension, here are the options that I can open up with. Um, and so sometimes when those app installs, they'll automatically kind of register themselves as that. There's honestly, though, also a lot of apps that you install on Windows and they don't even register themselves. You have to go pick them and set, tell, the, tell the operating system that they're a version. So it actually does work a lot better in Android than it does in Windows. Because um, Windows is simply based on that file extension. So there's there's a very small limit. Mine it plus the, hey, what's your default web browser? What's your default photo viewer? Things like that. right? But we can do a lot more with that in Android. Um, including, um, one of the things we won't go to, we won't really go very deep on, but let's say you want to swap out the whole home screen on your phone. And you want to use a different home screen. You can't actually do that. And and that's actually involves this whole implicit intent thing. If you want to make your own version of a, of a home screen, you, you use this as well. So it allows you to swap out a lot of things in Android, um, some of which may not be obvious at first glance. Um, so when the, the runtime gets a request, when it gets an implicit intent, it's going to go take that and look at hey, does it match the ones that have been registered, all the, the intent filters that have been registered, okay? And, and then we'll come back and say, okay, these are the ones that are filtered. These are the ones that match. Which one do you want to pick? Those are the ones that are going to pick show in the chooser. Um, if there's only one option, it'll automatically just put you into that particular app. There's only one option. Um, if there's more options and you've chosen a default already, then it will put, in, put you into your default. Um, so there's that as well. Okay. So the chooser that shows up looks a little, it looks different depending on what kind of version of Android you're running and who made the phone, etc. But it usually looks a little bit like this. So there'll be a header. What it says kind of depend again depends on the operating system that you can see here. So we try to open up the website. So we've got the browser app and the Chrome app. Right, so if I was on most Samsung tablets, a lot of them have a built-in Samsung browser, so you can see both of these things show up. So I could choose to either go into the browser or to go to Chrome, and then if I check this box, use, use by default, every time from there on, if I get an implicit intent to open up a web page, it'll use that option, so remember that. The user goes to have to answer that prompt every time. So how do we send an implicit intent? So sending an implicit intent is not that different from sending an explicit intent. Now remember when we send an explicit intent, we said new intent. What did we give it as the arguments to that constructor? What did we say after new intent? Uh, the first argument was this. Okay, which is the current object. It's the it's current the current object. object. What type does it have to be? Uh, it has to be the current activity. Well, which the current activity is a Dalton. Uh, remember the app context. So that first argument has to be a context. Uh, that first argument is a context. Okay, so as long as we're in an activity, yes, this refers to the current activity. The current activity is a context. Um, but what you have to remember is that there's more than one kind of context. Um, so if I say this, 
which is what we're going to do in all these cases here right now, this refers to the current activity context. Also remember that there is get application context. Okay. So if I call this, I'm getting the application context, not the activity context. Either of those I can pass in as that first argument. Okay. Does that make sense? Both of those are contexts. Um, the reason I'm doing this one is I want to make sure that the activity I launch shows up on top of the current activity. Right? Does that make sense? This get application context is something we'll see a lot more in units three and four when we get there. And because once we get to units three and four, we'll be talking much more about this, this application object and, and the application context because we'll be outside of the world of activities. So in this context, the thing to remember there, that first argument is a context, right? It's a subclass of the class context, okay? So I need the context. What's my second argument if I'm creating an explicit intent? The second Okay. What's the data type of it? It's a class, right? So if I want to create an explicit context, explicit intent, I need to pass it a context and then a class. That's what it expects. So that's the constructor I use, right? So for an implicit intent, I'm going to use one of two constructors. I'm either going to create it with just an action, which the action is a string, or I'm going to create it with a action and a data. So it'll be string and URI. Does that make sense? So we're going to use one of these two constructors instead when we want to create an implicit intent. We won't use that constructor for an implicit intent. So that's usually the easiest way to see what kind of type it is. Just by looking at new intent, what are the arguments? That's how you can tell what kind of intent is it. Okay. So if I want to say, let's do dial, I can just create that intent with the action dial and say start activity. And what that action says, which if you look at the documentation for that action, it says open up your dialer, right? Open up the file, your phone app, and open up the dialer because I want to call somebody. Okay. Now, because I haven't given it a phone number to dial, it'll go into that dialer, but it'll be blank. Does that make sense? It'll go into that dialer, but it'll be blank. They'll have to type in the number. Okay, so all of these action strings, um, there's a very good place to look them up online. Let me pull that up. All the ones that we'll see today. Um, if you look at the intent class in the documentation, all of these constants, the action constants and the category constants, Con uh, constants that we'll talk about in a minute, all of those are on the intent class. So you can actually look up what they do there. Okay. So here I'm looking at the dial action. Right. So two things to note here: you can kind of see, first of all, public static string. Right. So that tells you it's a constant. Plus this kind of naming convention with all uppercase and underscores should also tell you that it's a constant. You can look down at the bottom, it'll actually tell you what the value of that constant is. You can see android.intent.action.dial. Um, when we're working with these action strings or these category strings, if we're working with them in Java, I always recommend you use these constants. Okay? 
Now, however, if we're using these in XML in our manifest, we'll actually need to look up this value here, android.intent.actions.doc. That's what we actually have to put in our XML when we specify that. Does that make sense? So you may want to look at, at both of those two things. But what we've got in the middle here, you can see that it says, well, what does this do? Right? Every single action string here is, is defined and, and documented as to what the purpose of it is. Um, so we can see dial a number as specified by the data, show the UI, yada, yada, yada. You'll also notice that there's this input section. Right, so it says if nothing, get an empty dialer. So if I don't specify any data or extras, that's what I'm going to get. If I do specify in the data the URI for a phone number, you can kind of see it's it says it should start with tell. That's where it's going to go ahead and put that phone number. Right. So there's a lot of things that you can get out of this documentation that will tell you what you need to put in the data, what you need to put in the extras. Does that make sense? So anytime you're using this, you want to make sure you look that up. How does it function if I'm on a, uh, if I want to like make this app and I'm using it on a tablet that okay. calls the action dial or tries to? Well, does it does the tablet have a SIM card? I don't think so. I don't know. Does it have a phone app? Uh, I don't know enough, so I shouldn't know. So th that's well, that's the question. There are some tablets that may some tablets do have SIM cards, some don't, right? So if it's got a SIM card and a phone phone app, I can call, right? But if it doesn't have either of those things, specifically if it doesn't have a phone app, then I'm going to get an error, right? When I tell it to start activity, it's going to say there is no app to do the dial action. Okay, that can happen for any of these implicit activities, any of these implicit intents. It may be that there is no app that can handle it these implicit intents. We'll look at that in a minute, right? So in that case, it's going to throw in no act, no such, uh, no such activity exception. I think I, I pulled it up here, but if you look at the actual activity class, let me pull up the activity class, we can see it. So if I look at the start activity method, you'll see that it can throw the activity not found exception. So in that case, say there's no phone app, well, that's what I would get. Does that make sense? When I try to start the activity, I'm going to get that exception. And again, that happens anytime there's not such an app, right? So let's say I ask the, cam the, the device to take a picture, right? Capture a picture. Well, they have no camera app, same thing. Right. So what we'll see in a moment, there's a way to check if there is an app that supports that or not. So you don't get that exception. Does that make sense? So we'll see that in a minute. Um, there is a way to check for that. Right here. So generally considered good practice before we send out an implicit intent. You don't need to do this with explicit intents because you're working with your own code. But if you're going to send out an implicit intent, we need to ask, is there actually an app that can handle it? Okay. So because start activity is what's going to throw the exception. So we create the intent, and then what we do is we call intent.resolve activity. So intent.resolve activity will return um, something that will tell us kind of which app is going to use that. It's going to implement that. Right, or what options are available. Um, so if I do resolve activity, I need to then give it the package manager. The um, package manager is kind of what manages all the applications that are installed. Remember, every application you install is a package, right? Has a package in it directly. So the package manager, you can kind of think of the application manager. So this will say if it's if it is null, well then I know there's no app for that implicit intent. If it does return something that's not null, I do have at least one app that can handle it. Does that make sense? So that's how I would handle devices that don't have a phone. So the exception is thrown if you have to start, if you're about to start activity. 
without making that check? It will be, yeah. Well, the start activity will only throw an exception if, if there no, is no act. Right. Right. Okay. So I can still call start activity, right, on a web browser link and just kind of say, well, they'll probably everybody has a web browser link, mm -hmm. has, a, has a web browser of some sort, and it'll work as long as everybody has a web browser. Right. So I really only have to do this check in theory on things that are on common, um, but the recommendation is you do that for everything. Anytime you're going to send out an implicit intent, go check it. So we might say, okay, let's go check it. Otherwise, let's show the user a toast message to say, hey, we don't have an app that can do this thing. Right. So that might be a common way to solve that is show them a toast in that case. You might also want to write something out to the log, but I would definitely give the user some indication that, hey, you can't do that. Okay. So if I want to pass in data, because previously we set this up with, with just a, let's call action dial, but not tell it what phone number to dial. Let's go action dial, step one, step two, we call set data. Right? So set data is a URI. Set data cannot take a string. Right? So we have to take that string, somehow turn it into a URI. As a typical rule of thumb, these URIs always start with something, colon, long. Right? So this here tells it the protocol. That's what we call the protocol. So like common websites, you'd see HTTP, HTTPS for the website. You might see FTP for FTP for, for uploading download files. Um, you might see um, file there, where you're just, op just opening the file on the actual site, right? So, so what you see at the beginning there determines kind of what kind of resource it is. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create the intent, set the data start the activity. Okay. Some of these slides will leave off this if check. Just recognize that you should always have it. That's just for brevity's sake. Okay. So let's say I want to part, I want to use a few different URIs. Um, here are a few different URIs I can set up. Phone number, we just saw, URI parse. I'm going to start it with tell and then followed by the phone number. If I want a address that I want to look up in a map, you can see it starts with geo. Okay, so that geo is going to tell it to open up in your map app. And you can see, like for instance here, you've got Q equals Brooklyn Bridge, Brooklyn, New York. So if I put that in there, I would show I would see the Brooklyn Bridge open up in the map. Um, but I would do a different action here. This would be this would be action dial, this would be action D. Same thing way over here with the URL, I would do action D. So you can see tell geo HTTP. So again, that's the that's one of the things you want to pay attention to is what is the, the protocol that you're using. There's a link down there at the bottom which will take you to more info about the URI class as a whole. Um, and then that's back on the SDK documentation. So Let's say I want to show a web page. Now we saw how to show to dial a telephone number. Here's how I would dial. I would open up a web page. I'd say you want to parse, create the intent, pass in that to start activity. I actually usually do that as two lines um, because you may or may not need to keep the intent around. Right? Now if you're doing the if check, you know you do have to kind of put in a variable. They do put this as it. Please make sure you're using descriptive names. That's just for the fitting it onto the site. So usually we just call that as, as the name of the code. So that's how we do it for uh, a web page. Here's our phone number. You can see that there's really not that much difference between the two. Um, let's say I want to add extras, right? So some of these Actions require extras. So if we look at the documentation for Action Web Search, Action Web Search allows us to open a search engine and say, hey, I want to do a search for this, right? I want to 
look for recipes for chili, right? So I can put that in. Right? Now remember that a URI, right, has to start with a protocol, etc. Right? So if we're taking a query from the user, it's probably not going to have a protocol at the beginning. So the way that this one works is it doesn't actually look in data. It looks into an extra called query. Okay, because that can now be a string. It can be any string the user wants to enter. And so we've got an edit text on the UI. The user types in their search keywords. And then we're going to go run this search. If they just give keywords, it's going to do the normal usual search with those keywords. If it starts with HTTP, instead it'll go just open that link in the web browser per the documentation of actual web search. So I can, I can kind of build my own Google search into my app if I want to use that. Right. So create the intent, put extras, there's that. And then start the activity. The only real difference here between this being implicit and that being explicit, in between this being implicit and what we do with explicit intent is that first line. It's how we create the intent. Right? Otherwise, this could be going, I could just change that to an activity up there, and I could be going to my own search. Um, there's also an additional thing that we can set on these intents called the category. Um, the category kind of refines maybe a little bit more what type of thing you're doing. Um, so the one category that you've seen already is that launcher. Um, so you see main launcher is how I create that launcher shortcut. There's also a category called pump. So if I have action main category home, I'm actually now saying that this activity can be a home screen. That's actually all I have to do. Um, I've declared that now, hey, you can use this, this activity as your home screen. Okay. So these are some ones I might want to use. There's a whole long list, um, but category open, openable, says, hey, I can take any URI um, that maps to a file on the system that you want to open, that is, that I'm able to open, right? So that wouldn't include like system files, maybe, um, but it would include anything that's like in your data folder, whether it be a downloaded file or, or some other sort of thing, right? So this kind of says, hey, I want a file on your disk that you can open. Um, or I could say category brow browsable, and that's you now that's a link to something on the internet. Right? So openable is something I'm saying I only want local files, or hey, I want to listen for URLs. So let's say I have one with a let's create an intent with a category and also, a mind type. So I'm going to go with action create document. If we look at the documentation for that, we need to set this, we're going to set this as category openable. So we're saying this is going to refer to a file on the, on the user's phone or tablet. And we're going to try and create a new file. Okay. Now we told it here, application PDF has the mind type. We talked about mind types last semester. But we said, okay, we want to open an app and create a new PDF, right? If I wanted to create a new text document, I would say text file. And in fact, the way this works, it will return that document when they finish that. So we can actually open this with a start act activity for result and get that document back, which is what I did. So. I say start activity for result because this is going to return something, right? Same way that I did start activity for result with local, local activities, I can do this with, with other apps. And this is kind of the same way that I would actually capture an image. If you wanted to use the camera, we'd say start, start activity for, for result. It goes and they take the image and then we come back. And we treat it just like we 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 get that result we in on result, just like we did previously. Okay, so some common 
actions that you might see is say set alarm. You want to set alarm in their phone. Image capture, that's how we go and say, hey, I want you to take a picture. There's also one called action eight, video capture. I think you can guess what that one does, right? So I can get an image or I can get video. Uh, send to is for sending an email. There's also a action send for sending emails. Both of those are related to that. Action view, <coughs> anything I want the user to be able to open. Um, so that's typically for web pages or files on or files that are on your device or for um, maps, right? If I give you the geo address, that's going to be where it is. Um, I could open up, if you give it a file on the device that's a music file, this will actually open it up in the music player. So that action view is, is probably one of the most useful ones. Um, and then action dial, as we've seen previously, is to get them to dial that number. If you want them to dial your business, we'll use that. So there's a lot of common actions that are handled by apps that they have installed, um, whether it be system apps, other apps. Um, those include dealing with the alarm clock. Alarm clock is a pretty common one, especially if you're dealing with scheduling, calendar as well. You want to add an event to their calendar, camera, contacts, email, file storage, maps, music video, the list goes on. Right, So there's a lot of apps that you may need to integrate with at some point. Um, if we follow the link on the right, um, this list of actions, common actions, um, that whole list that we looked at a second ago is pretty long. Right, There's a lot of actions that are actually out there. Um, so this article goes over just what are the most common ones. Um, if you have this, let me zoom out there. If you're looking at it on the right, you'll see it's even grouped. So alarm clock, calendar, camera, contacts, email. So if you ever want to see how to do some of these things, uh, you can go over here to this document and kind of see, okay, all of these common actions that I might want to do, they'll give you instructions specifically about how to do that. Okay, so we talked about how to send an implicit intent. Now, what about if we want to write an app that actually receives them, right? What if we want to write an app that handles some of these needs? So, the first step is we need to declare that we're interested in it. We declare an intent filter in our manifest. We say this activity can handle this kind of action. And it also puts some conditions on what kind of intents can it handle, right? It can't handle all implicit intents. It can say, okay, well, here's the ones that I support. So the way we do that is we add an intent filter tag inside of our activity tag. Remember, every time we create a new activity, we have to create these activity tags. So here we put an intent filter. I need to specify potentially up to three parts to this. So the first is an action. The action says, I only care about intents that are set to this action string. Okay. So this one says, I only care about send actions. Okay. So we've got the category. Category is default. If you have an intent filter, you have to put default there. If you don't put default, it's going to completely ignore your intent filter. You won't get any implicit actions there. Okay. So default, you have to have. You can have additional categories as well, but you always need to have default there. Okay. The next thing we have is the data, right? So you see data and our line type is text plain. So this is only going to respond to text plain. If you're trying to send plain text, this will respond. If you're trying to send something else, like an image, this won't pop up as an option. Does that make sense? This won't pop up in the app chooser for images or videos or audio. It just shows up for text plain. So when 
you were specifying those out, and you look up the, the full on constants, so you can see action view, there's the full active form you specify it out. So I might say, I want to listen for view, I want to listen for send. I can specify categories. We saw a browsable launcher. Those correspond to some of the ones we've already seen. There's also openable in there as well. And data, I can do a few things. So I can filter by scheme. So here I would say I only want ones that are over HTTPS. Or I might say I only want ones that are over HTTP. Or I might say I only want ones that are geo. Right? I might say action view geo, then I only care about one data geo, and then I only care about the ones that are map addresses. That makes sense? So I would go to map. Um, I can also specify a host. Right? And I have to specify both of these things together. Might specify a host. So here I'm saying I only care about web links that go to developer Android. Right? If I'm Facebook, I would probably say Android host Facebook.com, right? Because I want to handle anything that's for Facebook. Right? If I'm for Twitter, I'd probably say Android host Twitter, right? Dot com. So you can do this to filter out and say, I'm only interested in links to my own domain. Right? That's a very, very common thing to do. And then we can also, as we saw, filter into certain mind maps. So I can filter by the scheme or the protocol, the host. Or the right one. So the other thing I can do, so sometimes I'm going to handle different kinds of implicit intents with the same activity. Okay? So when I want to do that, I can actually have more than one intent filter. So in this case, I'm specifying an intent filter for the send action. And here I'm specifying another intent filter for send more. Now, you'll notice that there's a dot, dot, dot here because there's some stuff missing. I still need the category, and I may still need the data. Um, the data tag is actually completely optional. If you leave off data, then it accepts any URL that comes in, any URI that comes in. Um, so that's optional, but I always have to have at least one action, and I always have to have category default. That makes sense? The rest of the stuff is optional. So sometimes I may want to set it up like this and say this kind of action and this kind of action. Sometimes I, but most of the time I want to kind of combine those together to kind of simplify the code. And that way I don't have to deal with as many different cases. So what this says here, you'll see I've got two different actions, one category, two different data, right? So this says that the action can be either send or send multiple. The category has to be default, and then the mind type can either be in and or data. Right? So effectively, this is creating four different filters, right? In one filter here, I'm creating four different filters. You see that? This or that, this or that. If I was going to specify this as separate filters, I need to write four different ones. Um, so that's where this becomes very useful to specify different options. And that's it. That's really all I have to do if I want to receive those intents. If I want to receive an implicit intent from another app, that's all I have to do is write an intent filter. Questions? You've seen how to send them. You've seen how to receive them. That's really what you need to know about there. Um, there are some links in here to know more to find out more. Um, the biggest place where I'd recommend you look is in the intent class documentation, right? There's a whole bunch of stuff in there, um, including there's a constant for every kind of, every single action, there's a constant for every single category, and so you can go through there and you can see what are those different categories, what are those different actions. Um, if we just take a quick glance there, I can kind of show you how many different actions there are and how many different categories we're looking at. But it's a lot. So if I scroll down to 
here, you see under constants, there's a whole bunch of constants here. So actions start up here, and they just keep going. They're all alphabetical, right? Category, we've got alternate all the way down to there, VR home, right? So you can see there's a whole long list of categories that you can pick from. Yeah. So category default is kind of everything. Um, so if we read the, the documentation here, what does it say? So set if the activity should be an option for the default ac action. Uh, to form on a piece of data, setting this will hide it from the user any activities. Setting this. So, so we put that into we put that into our intent filter, and that basically just kind of covers everything. Is the gist of it? Um, I don't know what to say too much about that, but effectively it says. I think my understanding on that is that it says that it can be used as a default, right? Or that it should be available on the app chooser. Is my thing. Um, it's tip, I think basically the idea is you use that or you use something more restricted, typically. Um, there's also documentation on the URI class, which you may need to look into. Um, there's that page that I linked to other um, earlier about all the common kinds of intents you might want to send out. And, and what apps they interact with. Um, they're also here allowing other apps to start your activity. Um, if you look through that, that'll kind of guide you through setting up those intent filters and talking about that if you want to have other apps use your app, link into your app, right? So let's say you're, you're building your, your, your app for your company and they want, if you click on a link to mycompany.com, online and you want it to direct it into your app. Well, this would be where you kind of start if you want to make your own in, um, implicit intents. So that's really all I have there. That's really all we wanted to talk about today is how do we send implicit intents and how do we receive them. Okay, so, so what you want to do from here now um, I'll be by to check off any homework or uh, coding challenge, etc. stuff that, that we still need to check off. Um, but where you want to start now is for the code lab on 2.3. It'll walk you through creating this app. It's going to have three buttons. So one to open up a website link based on the text you put in there. One to open up a map with the, the text you put here. Or to share a share a message with the different apps that you have available. Um, so that's what you'll build there. Um, going down to the coding challenge, this coding challenge builds on top of the um, shopping list that you built yesterday. Um, and then the homework, which is due tomorrow, um, also builds on the app that you're going to build today to add this take picture button. Um, so that's that's where you want to go.